Hey all, thanks for watching. I just wanted to quickly inform you about my financial services agency, which operates in the life insurance space. So we help families with debt elimination plans and create tax favored retirement solutions. We support small businesses, nonprofits, worker owned co-ops, unions, and social enterprises with employee and member benefits. We offer white glove insura tech services to community banks, credit unions, financial co-ops, and CDFIs. And we provide enduring acceleration and downside capture strategies for all kinds of investors. Check out the link in the video description and enjoy the show. So if I can show you your brain with your creative thought process and green and your brainstem activity, in blue right here you know I can show you what's going on in your brain why not show you what's going on in a place right so this is this is Buncombe County you live here I live here gray is non-taxable so here's Mount Mitchell mm -hmm. and here's Pisgah the national forest that low value yeah. yeah they're non-taxable so just to be crude about it they don't pay me taxes I don't care right okay fine green is low value so here's um, Big Ivy up here and then here's the Biltmore Estate which is Biltmore Estate what the house is on the one the parcel the house is on is worth 100 million dollars so it's it's very valuable right yeah. but how many how many 180,000 square foot houses are there in the county one <laughs> or in the right in the country in, in the, the, on, <laughs> yeah there's in one. the country yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so it's on 8,000 acres of land so it's like saying miles per tank but this is how people talk about economics and it's like this is stupid this isn't like we don't say miles per tank when we talk about cars so rather than total value this is value per acre the model just shifted mm. and you know this is where a lot of people stop and I'm like no like, communicate it so this is what it looks like in 3d so if I if I just kept it here you know a lot of people are just like there's some nerds that'll know like oh 20 million is way more than 6 million right if you look at the histogram but this shows you the scale difference and you can see west Asheville right here you can right. see downtown you can also see downtown black mountain yeah you know and then you can see the sprawl on the south side you can see what goes out to lester which is here's lester highway right there that doesn't look all that great you know it's a bunch of garbage um but the thing is like why not have a black mountain on the west side over here in Enka candler like why didn't that happen um, why didn't it have you get something good with Biltmore Park, but not a whole lot compared to all of the trash around it? Um, the other thing is you can see a scale of wealth. Look at over here by Chun's Cove mm -hmm. on the on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Notice how that is less productive. Also, Biltmore Forest right here is less productive than West Asheville. Would you have known that Biltmore Forest or Chun's Cove is less productive than West Asheville? No. So no. Let's show it to people. So this is this is our old thesis. Just show you the information, and not just talk about. It. We got a Duncan County GIS. You can see Biltmore Forest, yep. all these large lots over here. Um, but this is shallow. I see. I see. And then you go down. This is the golf course in Bilt Biltmore Forest. Here's the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you can grab a parcel right here. Yep. So this is a house that's worth three million bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our state law says the property's tax value should equal the actual building if it were to be sold. So this is a 22-acre parcel. Let's, we can go see that right here. 22-acre parcel on the Blue Ridge Parkway and in Biltmore Forest. It's only worth three million bucks, and it's 22 acres. Um, it's also got a building that's 13,000 square feet with a 2,300 square foot finished basement. Holy crap. Yeah. Three million bucks. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely worth more than that. And I saw the assessment value is one and a half million. That's just, that's just the building value. The, the land value is one and a half million. So the, the building's worth as much as the land. Like how? And anyway, so this is. So I, I challenged this with our assessor. I'm like, Keith, you need to explain that to me. I said, better yet, hang on. Explain this one to me. You can look at its billing history. So these are all the bills that were sent to the property. Mm -hmm. And it's got the tax value on it, right? So $3 million right. is what the tax value was in 2023. All right, let's go back to 2011. What was the tax value? What does that say? $4 million. How has it lost a quarter of its value in 10 years? Especially when um, the housing market has doubled in that time. Yeah. 
So if you go over to, if you do the same example over here in Shiloh, you'll see the a direct opposite. Right. Um, so we're going from the wealthy neighborhood where the tax, where the taxable value has actually gone down as the market's gone up. So they're paying less in taxes, even though their property is actually worth more versus the poorer neighborhood over here where. So this is Asheville's red line map. Uh -huh. And you can see in 1930, Biltmore Forest was protected. So from 1930 to 1968, when these maps were deemed unconstitutional, Shiloh's yellow. So Shiloh's like one step above hazardous. Hazardous is red. So you could, it was like near impossible to get a mortgage. You couldn't yeah. get a protected mortgage. Uh, but that is Burton Street right here. Um, yeah. This is the south side of Asheville that actually creeps all the way up into parts of Monford. But where did we plow 240? Right through the Red Line neighborhood. Where do we plow, plow 240 southward? Right through the red line neighborhood. Right through the red, red um, and yellow. Yep. Um, but this is the law. So here we go. Let's, let's be attorneys. So in North Carolina, our tax value needs to be the price at which it would exchange hands between a buyer and a seller. All right. Here's a house. Here's what the computer model assessed it at. So one of the things that we pointed out to Keith is your computer model up because here's where the actual sale happened for that house. So be it not for that transaction that person that house would have overpaid for their government 16%. Now, to the credit of the assessor, they corrected it um, and something called the general parcel review. So they basically did a, they were like, oh, that, that's wrong. Okay. And so they made it 100%. Cool. Here's another one. In this case, the computer was under by 3% and they brought it up. Okay, so this is how they're dealing with folks in low wealth neighborhoods of Southside and Shiloh. Let, right. Let's talk about art. Let's talk about Arden or... Uh, um, the rambles. Okay, we have to change scales because this is a more wealthy house. Here's what the computer assessed it at. And I said, Keith, look, if if my kid brought, brings home a test score of 50, I want to know what's going on. So can you tell me what's going on with the computer software where it's that far off the assessment of that house? Now, here's why I don't trust you is because even with the test score, we all know what this thing sold for. We all saw what it exchanged for in the marketplace. Why did you do a general parcel review and only bring it up to 64%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you think we're cherry picking, let me know if you see a trend here. Uh, this last one kills me. I mean, the, the moral courage to bring it up one whole percentage point. Boy, you're a rock star. So what ends up happening is this person on the far left is paying full freight and them and how many of their neighbors are supporting somebody on the side of the mountain. Well, we can do the math on that. So it's, it's five people are supporting the one person on the side of the mountain. And, and when same, you look at the, and this is all being paid into the same tax base, which means that the low income neighborhoods are literally subsidizing the high income properties to the tune of a million dollars a year. And we're under assessing people over two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, a tune of six million dollars a year for a seven million dollar a year subsidy. And so if we're doing reparations, now remember, I showed this to the county in 2021, and I said, please don't do your reassessment. This is flawed in your system, and this needs to be interrogated because the first rule of reparations is do no harm, or you need to set up a reparations fund to start it with at least $7 million a year. And I was immediately hit with a tax penalty by the county, which was like, it cost me 600 bucks, but I'm like, I'll pay it. You know, but this is the attitude of what people do here. Um... And it's not so, just here, obviously. I mean, I'm sure this this is where you oh yeah, this is nationwide. From, this is happening everywhere. Yeah, this is this is. Uh, there are some houses that are growing in value in Biltmore Forest, but the majority are losing value, 55 percent for a net loss of 40 million bucks. So it wasn't just that one house that I showed you. Of course. Not. Um, so yeah, Shiloh is on the right. It's overpaying 1.5 million, and Biltmore Forest is underpaying 4.4. So that's that's. That's 111 school teachers. So <clears throat> I think, I don't, I don't know if you've been paying attention in the news, but uh, you heard that we, we voted to uh, raise teacher salaries. Well, also the bond. Because North Carolina has been the lowest paid in the country for quite I, some I time. I don't care. Like there's, yeah. there's 7 million bucks right there. It's like, hello. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like 4.4 4. 4 million is a lot of 111 school teachers. Like, how about this? Let's stop giving a discount to Biltmore Forest and let's pay our teachers properly. Like, it's not that the money doesn't exist, it's that we've misallocated it mm -hmm. into certain subsidies for certain people. And they don't deserve it.
It's like you do, you can't get away with that. So why why do they get away with it? Sounds like some people are dependent on the government and are just mooching off the system, right? Like, but oh, yeah, we never we need talk to start about a, them like that. Yeah, we need to we need to start an urban renewal program for this community that's just decla- decaying in value. The Chads and Cassidys of the world really need our help. You know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's and it's we will rant and rave about you know someone who like you know is a single poor mom who needs like food assistance. But millions of dollars getting subsidized in the other direction, we don't ever hear about that kind of thing. You know how much this drives me nuts in Asheville? It's like, oh, Black Lives Matter. It's like, uh, put your money. Two thousand and one. Yeah, two thousand and one was. Have you have you seen this in, in Asheville Watchdog? Have you seen them write about this in Asheville Watchdog? No, not this. No. Yeah. Why? I've been no. I've been sharing it with them, and they're just like, oh no, it's complicated. I'm like, no, it's because you live on the top of mountains. And you don't want your tax bill going up. I mean, this is how, this is how shameful this community is. And I, I showed this to Brownie Newman. I'm like, dude, like you adopted the reparations thing, and they're all protecting the system. So anyway, I, I'm like, whatever, fine. Uh, we're gonna do this for San Antonio. At least I can work with Texans. Yeah. I can't work with people in Franklin <laughs> County. Oh, and this isn't our first dude, project in Texas. So f- first off, we presented this to the county in 2021 okay they went into this duck and cover mode or at first they were like oh it's complicated I, I went and had breakfast with the assessor and i'm like dude, dude i don't want you to take this personally because this is a systemic problem across the whole country um the commissioners all of them like six out of the seven the only one i didn't get to was presley and all of them were like this is screwed up we need to do something about it and they immediately did a rebate program for four hundred thousand dollars okay I don't know if you can do math, but seven million Sometimes. and four hundred thousand—that's not equitous. It's like, look, at least do seven million dollars of rebates, and then on top of that, you're going to make people of low wealth that are doing like two jobs come fill out some damn paperwork to get the rebate. Yet the rich people don't have to fill out paperwork. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, and 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 it was just like, what the hell are you doing? And they're like, oh no, no, we're going to do this ad hoc committee, and they did an ad hoc committee to study our work. It would take me 10 meetings before they actually saw my presentation. Well, well, the other thing is like, look, I'm not going away. So you can, you can choose to not do anything. It doesn't look good as a story that this liberal community where the city and the county both adopt reparations and, and, and say they committed to it when handed a solution, they choose not to do it. So that's not my choice. That's your choice. And it's damn embarrassing. Um, But you know, the the thing is like, I, I showed, I showed, I'll send you the presentation. I showed it yeah, to yeah, yeah. I would love it. Black, it. Some, some black black leaders. And I'm on the Zoom call, and it was like you know, a privilege to be the only white, you know, a white person in, in black space. And, and kind of, it was great that they afforded me that. And I'm incredibly lucky, but I'm going to use this position to to broadcast this stuff. And so I was like, look, I'm doing this. So is, is this fair? To you? Is this fair? And do you approve? And when they got done with the the presentation one of them said to me she goes you know we've always known that we've been getting stabbed we just didn't see the knife didn't know how you showed us the knife Mm -hmm. and the knife is power and so they know you know like all these systems align zoning was set up to separate white people from black people the tax system extracted wealth out of black people to give to white people when you look at monford and you look at the same tax model and you'll see it in the presentation the streetcar ran down Montford Avenue. All of those properties along Montford Avenue are lower valued and suppressed versus the pockets of black neighborhoods that were inside Montford. And it's like we targeted uh, through policy economic segregations. So I'm just pulling the veil off.